our water system without a water plan puts the public safety in danger, uh, at risk, and it puts our funding uh, for any uh, future work at risk because we don't have a plan. You don't fund uh, organizations that don't have a plan. And uh, I would ask the council to take up its responsibility and provide oversight to the mayor. I'm not on the list. Thank you. Oh, we don't have a list anymore. Out there you don't have a list anymore? Okay. Well. okay, well then I will open up the public hearing for the 2022 budget. Jane, do you want to speak to this? Or? No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> you both, or was your written? Appreciate that. Well, I've got some more. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask. If someone could explain, and I brought in a copy, I'm sorry, but I had very little time to review the document. The difference on this pie graph from the capital report, I think it's called, Thank you. capital budget 2022, and I only need seven copies, so I'm sorry about that. Can you think it's just going on here? Here. Okay, because this I pointed out the discrepancies that I could find, and it's not clear why they are. Um, for one, why are they so different for the same funds? Why is the water capital projects fund missing from the pie chart entirely? Why is the police on the capital budget? Why and what is the cap the category current expense? I'm just confused about how that relates to identified funding, especially with things like the uh, aforementioned. Other numbers that I can't see how they're consistent is within the cash activity in and out. I'm not sure which period of time this relates to. Um, could someone please explain why on cash out, the street fund, the storm O&M fund, and the water debt service are in the negative? And also why the storm O&M fund has different totals available on the cash in and the cash out page? Um, in addition to my written, written items that I've identified in the budget that I'm just, I don't know where they're covered or how. Staff training for the city's new treasurer, um, which has been discussed as pretty important. And concerning the OTAC contract, on December 7th, the mayor stated this will be funded from, quote, public works and elsewhere. And I'm wondering where we're going to break out on that. Uh, concerning the mayor's budget message, um, I'm wondering if he could please identify funding plans for the $1.75 million stormwater project after CP1, at least where we're looking for them. Also referencing the chip seal project we did, but this was dropped from the capital budget between the 11-16 version and tonight's version. I mean, it's not on that uh, capital budget. Um, also on 11-16, it was estimated at $17,000, not $25,000. Again, I wish it had been possible to have the budget in hand with time to ask specific questions and to make specific suggestions that could be considered that this budget was developed. I ask again for enough time to review the full package of documents before this budget is adopted. And I have out my written comments it would be possible to continue this hearing. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Member of the Council and Mr. Mayor. Uh, Doug Kilgore, 145 North 5th Street. Um, my comments on the budget, uh, I'll, 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 I'll limit to it limited number of subjects. Concerning the budget process, I really um, uh, wonder what, what, what you think you're going to do with this. Um, the budget process has not provided proper opportunity for the public or for the voting members of council to review these documents and able to understand what they may be voting on. You put a, a notice in the paper uh, as required, well, not as required, but the process does require public notice, but the document that you were noticing didn't become available, to my knowledge, until Friday after the, the after you know, after your, your council meeting, and then things changed subsequently after that. Uh, the, the, the process is supposed to have the mayor present his budget or her budget proposal, and, and then changes occur later, but. The base document remains available for, for inspection. It is made available 
sometime in October uh, rather than sometime in December. So I, I would ask that the, that the council continue this budget hearing that, uh, to allow further comment as people read what you've produced and as they read the further iterations of what you're producing if they, if they change. And that the council uh, radically tear down the, the elements of the budget. And if you pass anything, pass simply a bare bones budget to keep simple operations going with no new, it, no, new adventures. Um, and, then, and then sit down and, and prepare a proper budget uh, with, with actual information and uh, consistency between the elements. Uh, I'm particularly concerned about CARES funding. It appears in the capital budget, you, you've got some 265,000 uh, ex planned expenditures of CARES funding, CARES fund, but uh, nothing that I've seen anyone in council or administration describe fits the requirements of what is fundable with CARES money. And so if you've spent some CARES money already, I'd like to know what, what you spent it on in, in the 2020 and 21 CARES money and what, what you intend to spend it on for 2022, because it's, it's very clear uh, that CARES money cannot be used simply as revenue replacement. So if you're using it to float a, a salary increase for staff, which would be nice for the staff to have, but, uh, but, but not with money that you, you're not entitled to use. Um, so I, I, if anybody uh, knows the answers to these questions, I'd like to hear it. And if you don't know it, I think you should accept your ignorance and find some way to put a pause on this process. Any other public comment? To close the public hearing. On a new business, we got the OTEC contract for the funding for the passing of the change of the laws. Can I get a motion to pass this contract? I'll make a motion to pass the OTEC con contract. I'll second it. Discussion of council? Uh, any new updates with uh, where we left off? I know we didn't um, proceed last time, but like, are there. Uh, they had a start date. I know we said before the new year. Is there a? I think this contract is. When we yeah. initiate this contract, yes. is there like a start date though? That's been. And we'll get that as soon as I send this to them. Yes. Okay. So I mean, they were really. They turned that contract around in a day, so I expect yeah. to get something from them fairly quickly. We should yeah. at least have a start date before the end of the year for sure. Okay. Just out of curiosity. Is it, yeah, I was just wondering if anything was new from last week. But. No. Okay. Thank you. Were there any changes from what we saw? No, in fact, that proposal that you saw is just attached to that contract as Exhibit A. And then the only difference is um, we did get an actual fee schedule for what they're going to bill us at per hour to eat up that that amount, basically. Yeah. So there's an actual fee schedule attached as Exhibit B. So other than that, no changes. No. And it's still the guaranteed max is the same exact. Yeah, it's still not yep. to exceed. Yep, yep. Any other discussion, Council? All in favor of passing the OTEC contract, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay, please. Uh, next up, we got the 2022 payment agreement with Kittitas County Emergency Medical Services. Something we do every year. Mm -hmm. I get a motion to pass this. I make a motion to pass the Kittitas County uh, Emergency Assistance Program. A second. Any no. no. discussion here? All of the You want to speak to it or anything? Uh, that this is. Uh, contract that we provide uh, education for EMTs in the, in the fire department. So, so it's ongoing education. Cool. Good. Quite affordable funding. Yeah. yeah. Any other discussion here, Council? All in favor of passing the 2022 payment agreement with Kittitas County Emergency Medical Services say aye. 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 Anybody close say nay? And Councilmember <coughs> Shear, abstain. Uh, next, we'll move on to unfinished business. Uh, Michelle, do we have to vote on this? Ordinance 1185 is the, uh, the firewood, and we did everything right except we didn't assign a, a civil infraction amount. So and we don't have a fraction. We don't have an infraction amount so assessed already by, in our fee schedule. So how about we get a motion to set the amount, and then you guys decide the amount? I can make a motion to set an amount of fee structure for the firewood sales um, during firewood ban. 
on track. Second. All right, guys, how much? What do we got? Parking's at 100 now. Parking's is 100. it a first or a second warning? How does it work at this uh, point? Is there a warning for the first time and then the second time to fine? How is this structured? We never had one before, right? No. Nope. So far, right. yeah. so there, be... there isn't. It doesn't establish, it just says any person, firm, or corporation, their agents or servants who sell firewood during a fire danger burn ban declared by the Roslyn Fire Department shall be deemed guilty of a civil infraction with a fine in the amount of. Hmm. So there's no, there's no established warning prior to, to them receiving that fine. It's just a strict violation. Off the top of my head, I would think that we should give them a, you know, not maybe being aware of what the policy is, depending on who it is, and what's, but give them a warning that then I think the second time is an automatic fee. Um, it should, you know, it's during a firewood ban, so I think we should take it seriously, and the fee should be impacting. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I ask what what is the penalty for violating the fire ban? I don't think we have a fee established for that in our resolution either. It. Hold on, just like I'll grab it. No, is, is there is there what the fire department gives if you're burning illegally? Um, something that we can base that off. I mean, they're selling firewood for the same purpose, so maybe you know, if it's a two fifty or I mean. Like, I'd say at least $500. Fire marshal. Yeah, I, I just, to me, it should be impacting. I mean, it it's, should be, it's about yeah. our environment and what we're trying to protect. Yeah. It should be serious. Speaks. If you're selling firewood, you're feeding the danger, right? And I think that should be, it should be good. With a warning. With a warning. I think, I, just, just my opinion. I just, I'm in it for discussion, but I'm just a person that thinks it should be a, a stern warning with a written, you know, written document that says this is your warning. You get one warning period. The next one, you come here again, you're selling again, you're fine. I mean, I think it should be that clear. Yeah. That's just I my opinion. I know kind of whatever, but yeah, I agree with Nolan. At least five hundred dollars. Yeah. I like the warning too. I like to give a person that doesn't is just oh, wasn't thinking that time. But yeah, I just think it's, it's the right thing to do. And then you, you know, you give one warning that's written with um, their name. If they don't want to sign it, they have to sign it. But it's it's signed in the office that it's been distributed, and a uh, witness should probably sign off on it that it's been hand dropped off and. The next one's a $500 fine. I mean, I'm open to whatever the fine should, you know, any fine like that. I, I think um, it needs so, to be so hit. There's yeah, another one popping wanna... into my head, too. It makes sense. So you think so? Yeah. Hey, After a warning. I know the yeah. chief was shot us last spring and summer when the fire ban went into effect. He would go out and see potential offenders. And he'd make contact and mm -hmm. explain it to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did have contact with one of the people selling firewood as well. Mm -hmm. And he was burning right along the side of the road. You got him to put it out. Um, I think that's kind of the, the, the warning process you're talking about. They did a great job during the fire balance driving around town and, mm -hmm. and looking for potential problems. Mm -hmm. I think that's the warning system already in place, mm -hmm. personally. I think the fine needs to be stringent because one mistake and the whole thing goes up in flames. We don't want that. Nobody wants that. So I would be anywhere from 250 to 500. And I'm thinking 500. Tommy, you saying let the fire department give away. The fire department's going to go out and find the person before we're going to have a they just They're just looking for somebody burning. Though. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they're driving around all the time, too. They're just people selling firewood. Yeah. Um, and they'll go out and talk to them. Hey, you know, there's a burn van. Right. And I think once that's happened, uh, they're going to go back and issue the ticket. Yeah. They're the ones who can issue, right? Police. Police, 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 police will issue it. It's our RCW, though, right? What's that? It's our policy as a city. It's our policy. We yeah, just have to establish I mean, the fee that the police department the issue. The, but yeah. the fire department is volunteer, so I, I think that it should just be dealt with us. Well, civil yeah, action yeah, always has to be issued. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, you know, but they just my opinion. I mean, nobody likes um, to say. Well, but it'd be nice if they're out and about to let them know. No, I think it's know, great. Yep, I think course, that's great. Any, yep. any warning system is great. But my thought was then, to protect ourselves. It should be some type of formal written warning. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I'm open for I just think that that covers us, that we've given that before the fine. Yep. It's set that there's been a, an agreement. That there's not going to be more than no. five, maybe. We yep, have just right. one that, we all, that all comes to mind. Yep, you just right. have one. Yep. And it'll probably so stop after that. Yeah, right? hopefully it just stops after that. But if it yep. doesn't, I think. Just issuing that ticket and having that some documentation stored of mm -hmm. this person has one strike against them, next strike, it's, it's not fine. happening. Yeah. That's trying to create a record of it. Is yeah, right, yeah. to say. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's much bookkeeping to it. Just I think it'd be yeah. very minimal. Mm -hmm. All right, Jeff, why don't you amend your motion then to say first a warning, second a $500 fine? Okay. Um, do we need to decease the first motion and start over? Or do I? Can I make an addendum to that motion? I think you just. 
Okay, I'd like to make an amendment to the motion I made about the firewood sale, and I'd like to first start with a written warning from the city hall um, to, to be delivered, and then um, the second, the second would be an automatic $500 fine, uh, and that would be my amendment for the motion. Second. second. Okay. Any other discussion, or Council? All in favor of this, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Say nay. Before the new year, got it done. Firewood. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Maybe I, started I, that in July. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but we got it right, I think. That's what we wanted to make we'll sure. Right. We yeah. were almost yeah. there until I tried to put it away and saw no fee amount. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for Good eye. Yeah. Yeah, hey, uh, I forgot here. Uh, in new business, we have uh, 2022 Hotel Motel Tax Fund grants from the county that the commissioner wants us to pass. Make a motion to pass the hotel motel tax allotment. Second that. Oh. Yeah, the portion is, our, our is very yeah. small. It's like about it's less than six hundred dollars. It's like five ninety five change. <coughs> you got a vote on it, Mary? Yeah. Do we have a we got a motion on a second? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any discussion on this, Council? Uh, my. Um, the uh, thing that jumped out at me is how small it was relative mm -hmm. to everybody else. I mean, yeah. Yeah, relative to the total. Yep. So I was just wondering why that was. Based on uh, number of residents. Ooh, that pays into it. We don't have a lot of talks. Oh, and we don't it's, have a, and then it's oh, based okay. on we don't have that many hotel motel. Hotel. No. Yeah. no. The Grove. Where the has got a bunch. Yeah. And then they've also got some Cadian and the Airbnbs up there as well. So this is part, part of the argument. argument. Through tax lodging, as we've been in there for money in the past, is you know, we're, we're, in our, we're in our own boat, and, um, especially the VRBOs and so forth. You know, the illegal ones we don't collect from, and you know that we try to get, and the ones that are legal, it's very minute. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'll remind council is we get more than six hundred dollars in lodging tax money in the city of Roslyn. It's going into an account that's probably got I don't know, less than like forty-five, fifty thousand dollars, which can be used for municipally owned projects, um, so don't lose sight of that fact. Uh, when the weather turns to good and Bubba gets bored, and you can do some projects maybe at the park or something. <laughs> don't forget about that. So, yeah. so Tom, what you're, I think what was the total amount? 150 was it or something? Did we just read it? No, the, of the total. The total grant. Uh, yeah, I remember something like that. And then they only got 27. So, so what you're saying is it's strictly proportional the total amount of lobbying tax, our percentage that we pay it is X, that's what we get back. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's not what we get back, that's what we have to pay. Yeah. Um, we have a number of projects that were funded. I think the Roslyn Downtown Association, I don't remember the number off the top of my head. I think they're like 18,000. Yeah, it's under 20. Oh, the Heritage 20. Club, you find The Heritage yeah. Club got a bunch of money for a project too. And good, good year. So, I mean, for, it's a really good investment for Roslyn oh, okay. to bring people to town. Uh, I'm sorry, I showed you how so that's the amount we're paying into the fund. Yes. We're, yeah, we're paying, yeah. 595 and change, I think, is what that is. Gotcha. Okay. It's, it's beneficial for anybody that applies for activities. We're usually paying pretty good about funding. I mean, um, I think my first job we did, we brought back, when I did it with Janine and Andy, this 46% we actually brought to the city of Roslyn, which was quite a fight, but we were able to do it in upper, with Clown and Roslyn, which is quite a, quite a big deal considering what we had put into the fund. So it's quite beneficial even for the mining. Thank you for your tax lodging. Thank you for your work. Hey, Robert. Hey, Robert. Hey, Robert. Hey, Robert. 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 Just roll through. Okay. Any other discussion here, Council? All in favor of passing the funding of the 2022 Hotel Motel Tax Grant Fund? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say nay. Okay, and now we've got the police contract. Can I get a motion to pass the 2022 police contract? Make a motion to uh, accept the police contract. Second. Now, as, as was mentioned, um, the funding is in the budget already, mm -hmm. um, so it's so it's the same contract. Uh, I don't know if people know, but South Bell opted out and did hire out there the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. We looked into the cost of it and we discussed yep. that, as was mentioned, and yep. staying local was mentioned, and the time response was mentioned. Uh, one thing I was curious about this contract, I, I don't remember the last contract from last year um, or the year before, but was it a 20% increase 
Who uh, no, it was here. Is that, is that this year's new contract? Is because of the added police mm -hmm. person and the yeah. vehicles they want. Yeah. Which, if you look at what our budget is now, it's going to add another forty-five, fifty thousand dollars Well, no, it's in there already. No, for next year on the 20% well, yeah, interest, though. So I'm looking at next year. Next I'm looking year. at next year's revenues and so expenditures go, If we decide we want to opt out, mm -hmm. because 20% seems exorbitant for two years. You know, that put us up about $325,000 to where we're at 270 right. now, which when we're looking at tight budgets, you know, these are things that we need to think about as we move into um, our revenues this year and how we cover that extra. I mean, that's a massive right. increase. And, um, and does the service benefit the increase? Well, there's probably going to be another increase minus South Claim on is rebranding everything mm -hmm. because they've got to take the South Claim name on. Well, so South Claim has to pay for the changes in there. That's, oh, they have to pay. The oh, yeah, okay. so the new badges, I think. Well, they haven't ordered them because they're waiting to see what you guys do. But yeah. But the, yeah, that, that was written into the 2018, which we've been operating under every gotcha. year okay. since then. There's no is it a three or a four year contract? Thing? Well, they're usually just year to year. That's what I thought. Only yeah. when there's a change is a new one come up. Okay. So it's written to say it doesn't change until the parties decide. Yeah, that was the only thing that really caught me was the big increase. I, I like the fact that percentage of tickets go to equipment. I think that's a great right. way to fund equipment, um, you know, for be more advancement in our, our local police department. But that was the only thing that I was a little bit startled was the 20%. And obviously knowing what budget is, it's um, it should concern all of us and where that extra money comes next year and how we look about it. Yeah. My concern is... Uh, what we're spending more on and getting, uh, and sorry that Chief's probably on, and, but we're getting three new vehicles when uh, I, I brought up earlier to one of the council members, Clayon, that he said that, well, we, right now we have used vehicles, and I thought about it, and I was like, well, used vehicles are good because really we don't need high-speed chases on the freeway, we're not using a lot of miles, we're just doing Clayon Rosin and not soft Clayon anymore, and so it's like, why do we have to get these brand three brand new vehicles? Why can't we space these out and help the cities a little, especially like ours? Um, I know we said that at the beginning, but also I'd love to comment on that. Okay, one second, and then also if we are increasing. What are we going to be getting for our buck? Um, and that's going to be kind of playing into parking. I'd like to then issue stickers to every resident in Roslyn, and we start enforcing our parking codes, and we start figuring out how to make money for this new expense that we have to pay towards the police department because we have to figure out how to make some more money of money oh. uh, yeah it's going up mm -hmm. 47 or uh, for terrors going in more impact fees that's for the city that we are that we have to deal with not them and so it's fire police streets utilities and so this is going to kind of snowball in the next five years into something if we don't position ourselves correctly to offset these costs that we're going to be occurring here. Chief. Sorry, Chief. Chief, go ahead. Yeah, so in reference to the new cars, uh, I'd just like to comment on that. It's actually cheaper to get the new cars than the old ones. I've done extensive work on this. The Clay Allen Police Department has always bought used cars. And when you look at how many years we actually get out of them and what that costs us per year, it's cheaper to, to buy a new car. Yeah,